Welcome to Analyzing Ruby Weapons, the show where we examine the weapons of Ruby to see just how well they stack up as weapons and how well they fit their respective user. This week we cover Neon Cat and her weapon, the Glow Nunchucks. As always, the format will be the basic overview of the weapon, followed by the fighting style used, after which we'll cover the inspirations behind the weapon. After that, it's the changes as just either the weapon or the fighting style, and then finally to wrap it all up, We'll do the scoring, both for the weapon itself and for how well it fits its user. Neon's weapon of choice is a nunchuck that is shown to be able to channel the dust energies by cracking or bending the handles that are glow stick themed. While on the show we only see her use the ice type of dust, according to the Wikipedia, the director's commentary mentioned that cracking the handles again changes the properties. This is further backed up by the concept art, which shows several different lighting styles and colors for the nunchuck itself. Neon uses her roller skates and weapon in a hit-run tactic style, utilizing her semblance to increase her speed, which leaves a rainbow trail behind. This further increases the damage. She is also shown to utilize acrobatics with her skating to allow her to travel across many different surfaces. This has gone so far as to show her skating across many different types of surfaces, going forwards or backwards. Using ice dust, she is able to freeze the limbs of her opponents, allowing her to slow them down or weaken them. Through many different sites, I have found that discussing the origin of the nunchuck would result in me being told I am wrong no matter which version I use. For that, we'll only be covering the basics of the nunchuck itself, not its origins. The nunchuck is two sticks attached at one end by either a solid rope or a chain, and is used to extend the striking reach and power of a user. The weapon were first made from solid woods, and texture to allow for gripping. The first glow stick was invented in the 1960s and 70s, and was used by military as markers, specifically in the Navy. The glow sticks work by a binary chemical reaction, a thin glass vial holding one chemical stored in a flexible container with another chemical. When the vial is broken, the two chemicals interact and produce light instead of heat or something else. If this principle is carried over to dust in the show, it is possible that the dust is being agitated or something by a different chemical or method. Thus, when cracking it, it is simply agitating it. The first major change would be changing the weapon to utilize the system more similar to Weiss's weapon rather than cracking it repeatedly. This would allow Neon to pick and swap the elements as needed and increase her range and attack speeds. Another change would be to make her skates interchangeable as shoes as well, either by a heel tap or something because one of the main reasons she was defeated in the Vital Festival was that she lost her balance and the wheels got caught, sending her flying. So, a change in the roller skates into shoes would have prevented that. Versatility receives a 7.5 out of 10. The weapon has good close range combat flexibility, but lacks ranged combat, limiting its overall scope for damage. Simplicity receives an 8 out of 10. The weapon itself is not overly complicated, and would be roughly equal to learning how to wield a sword properly. The dust aspect that she utilizes is fairly simple in its idea and execution, meaning that you don't really have to work at it. Power receives a 7.5 out of 10. While it is fast, it lacks heavy blows, as shown by Yang being able to shrug off a large amount of the damage of the attacks with relative ease. But it is boosted by the CC abilities that it possesses, such as the ice swing down limbs. And it can deal potentially a lot of damage by combining elemental effects. DPS receives a 9 out of 10. The speed to which Neon can attack is very high, as shown by just her rapid fire barrage against Yang. This allows her to make up for the lack of da overall damage by increasing the sheer volume of blows. Weight receives a 10 out of 10. The weapon is extremely light for its size and packs a very hard punch given how light it is, making the damage to weight ratio very favorable. The total times 2 is equivalent to 84, which ranks an A minus. Fighting style receives a 9 out of 10. The high speed hit and run tactics that Neon utilizes matches the weapon extremely well. Along with the agile movements and the use of elemental damage types, this fighting style makes remarkable use of the weapon's natural properties and Neon herself with her cat tail to balance and her semblance to increase her speed. Size receives a 9 out of 10. The weapon is an excellent size for Neon as it allows her to extend her range without having to go for heavier, longer weapons. Semblance is an 8.5 out of 10. 
Well, we see little of her semblance, but we do see shows it works remarkably well to amplify the damage that she has by increasing the speed of her hit run tactics and maneuverability. Armor receives a 9 out of 10. Even accounting for the extra cores for the dust charges that she would likely need for a longer period of battle, which could be stored on a belt with relative ease, her armor is extremely well suited for her weapon as the skates make her able to hit faster and be more mobile, allowing her for the hit and run tactic style that she utilizes. And there's nothing in her armor set that makes it hard for her to wield her weapon. Carry weight receives a 9 out of 10. Both her weapon and the extra ammo she would need could be easily stored on a belt without getting in her way, and given how long a single charge can last her without being wasted, it hints at the weapon having very high ammo efficiency. When all the scores are added together and multiplied by 2, they receive an 89, which is an A ranking. And that concludes yet another Analyzing Ruby Weapons. Stay tuned for next week's episode where we cover yet another weapon, and leave your comments down below as to which weapon you want me to cover. Don't forget, I have a Patreon page. Every dollar helps. Not that I have any right now, but hey, who knows? You can be my first patron.